Hello everybody, my name is Cameron Brown and a warm welcome to today's video and in today's video I'm going to be talking about uh, a little bit more of an adverse topic, something that I know won't relate with lots of people so I expect this video not to do particularly well but it's a video that I've wanted to make for quite a while. Today we're going to be talking about multiple choice questions and why I believe a lot of them are fundamentally just unfair in general and I understand that that might not seem like an interesting topic and I understand a lot of people are going to be quick to go oh so you're an idiot and you never get them correct so that's why you're ranting about them but that's merely not true. Uh, the fact of the matter is I have quite a good argument I feel feel when it comes to a lot of multiple choice questions. Now, I want to firstly mention that this is not just applicable to every single A-level subject. Uh, AQA, generally speaking, I don't like as an exam board. The questions are so long-winded, like especially in physics. I mean, I've been doing a lot of revision, so I know the papers inside now. I know past papers very well. Normally, there'll be like a question that will involve multiple topics within one and there'll be lots of parts to one specific question. Hence, if you don't understand the complex concept of the experiment that you're, you know, basing your answers off, if you don't get that, you won't do very well in terms of marks. And if you get confused in prior questions, you struggle to do, you know, the other stuff which is not related with the topic that you messed up initially. So generally speaking, I don't like AQA. Now this video is mostly specific to physics. Uh, I do AQA chemistry, A-level chemistry, and generally speaking, the multiple choice questions are much, much better, and only a very few of them actually fall into this category. But for physics, there are a good amount of questions that are just generally unfair. Multiple choice questions in physics operate quite simply. You'll get four answers, and this is mostly for calculations. So that's like on this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new today. By the way, I need to mention that. So generally speaking, when it comes to physics, you get a multiple choice question, a calculation, let's say, and you'll get four answers. Most of the time, there's always an answer that's completely off, uh, an answer that's completely singled out, which most likely will never be the correct answer. And then there's only three other answers, which are normally quite close. Now here's the thing though, multiple choice questions I believe suck in general. No, number one, they take way more time. Number two is for just one mark, so even if you get it correct, you're not getting that much credit, even though the multiple choice questions themselves don't hold many marks specifically, you know, only one. The whole multiple choice section actually does cover, I believe, 20, so that's quite a few marks when you add them all up. I believe it's something like 10% of the whole course is literally just multiple choice questions. That's insane thinking about it. And the main reason why I don't like multiple choice questions is because it doesn't credit people who are actually intelligent but mess up. You see, the fact of the matter is someone who's good at physics may mess up a calculation. You know, that doesn't mean that they're bad at physics just because they mess up a math calculation, for example. And multiple choice questions do this a lot. If you're someone who's good at physics, for example, you're someone who understands the content inside and out, but if you work out a question wrong, if you work out a multiple choice question wrong that's a calculation, the chance of you getting the mark is completely zero because you'll always choose the answer that's been plotted there by the exam board because they know people will screw it up in this way and they want to catch you out. They want the question to be difficult. AQA put this massive pressure to make the hardest goddamn exam papers ever for physics. Like, there's a reason why the grade boundaries, uh, I think last year, it was 55% for an A. Like, it's because the paper's so damn hard. You know, no one's getting better than that. It's it's absurd. Like, isn't that a hint? Oh yeah, we're literally having to give people a grade A if they do half the paper correctly, effectively. Like, doesn't that make them realize that it's too hard? If you do a question and you're good at the physics, you know what equation to use and you mess up a number. Let's say you just write the wrong number down, but you use it in the correct equation. Maybe you do the standard form incorrectly, whatever. Okay, maybe you do some rounding errors. You forget to work out the correct value to put in a formula you will always get the wrong answer. And the most annoying thing is about this is the exam board know this. So they plot other answers that you will get if you make minor mistakes. But this means if you make minor mistakes, i.e. you know the physics, but you maybe mess up the question a little bit, the chance of you getting the mark is exactly zero because the answer is already there. You'll get the answer. You'll be like, oh yeah, that's one of the answers. You'll tick it and guess what? You won't get the mark. Because if you work something out, you get an answer, you check everything you've done quite quickly, and you go, okay, use the formula correctly, and then you see the answer on your paper, you're like, okay, that must be it. The chance of you getting the mark is zero. However, when it comes to people who are stupid, people who come to the physics exam with no revision, 
As long as they learn a technique to answer multiple choice questions, they can always get a good mark. That's something that I have noticed, specifically with the mathematical questions. Not really the word multiple choice questions, it isn't really that relevant. But when it comes to the number answers for multiple choice questions, which I would say is a good half of them, you can quite easily get the answer correctly, but not know anything about the topic. There's literally many videos that go through the best way to find a correct answer on multiple choice by cancelling the other answers out, the incorrect answers out, and it improves the probability of you getting the mark. So if you're someone who has no clue about the topic, you can almost always get rid of one of the answers. There's always an answer on multiple choice, and this is something that I've noticed all the time. There's always an answer that's completely different to the other ones. Cross that out, the chance of you getting a mark is one third. And when you think about it, it's just crazy to me how if you don't know what the hell you're doing with every single mathematical physics question, the chance that you'll get the mark is probably about one third maybe it's a little bit less than that but if you mess up every single question a little bit so you still have good physics knowledge you just mess up the maths let's say the chance of you getting the mark is much 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 less than one third so what multiple choice questions do is they mess up the gray boundaries this is the main issue with multiple choice if someone's really bad at physics right and they do a paper okay and there's no multiple choice chances are they will get less than 25 percent marks hands down but what multiple choice questions do is they allow idiots, people who literally will not even break a quarter marks on the paper without them, they pretty much improve the performance of these idiots. They give them a chance to get marks. Now, believe it or not, if you get 25% on the multiple choice questions section, or 33% because you did the technique of crossing out one of the anomalies of the answers, which most of the time is wrong anyway, so you crossing it out just increases the probability of you getting it to one to three from one to four. Effectively, though, what it does is it means that all these idiots that don't know what they're talking about and they just circle random answers, all they're doing is upping the grade boundaries for people who are actually intelligent. At the end of the day, people who are really good at physics do bad with multiple choice questions. It's a very normal thing. Me personally, I work at a grade A in physics. I normally get about 60-70% of the multiple choice questions right. I know many people who are working at grade A's and they won't even get 50% of the multiple choice questions right just because the answers are so hard to get to and it's so easy to muck them up and obviously choose the wrong answer, hence not get the mark. But there's always people who have no knowledge of physics who still manage to break 30, 40, 50% on the multiple choice just because they're good at guessing. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's probably easier to guess a correct answer rather than work it out incorrectly, get an answer, and then try to see which one it correlates with. I guarantee you'll lose the mark rather than get it if you try to work out incorrectly because they plotted the wrong answers for that exact purpose. And in summary, it just makes the whole thing crop because it allows people who are really dumb to get marks, marks that they don't deserve, marks that they're not getting because they understand physics, but marks that they're getting because of sheer luck and technique with answering multiple choice questions. And because of that, it's just up in the grade boundaries for people who, you know, are already struggling. You know, people who want to get into uni, you know, they need an A in physics to get into uni, but they're not quite getting it just because there's some idiots who still aren't getting grades. They're just getting a higher mark due to multiple choice question guesswork. And because of that, they're not getting the A because more students are getting higher marks just through guessing. In my honest conclusion, multiple choice questions are just awful. They really are. They don't test your intelligence with physics. Most of the multiple choice questions are just awful. They really are. But this is the good thing with multiple choice questions. They are so good to revise from. Seriously, I'm saying this as an A-level student myself. Revising from past multiple choice questions is probably one of the best ways to revise physics just because they're the hardest questions ever and they always seem to add something more to the syllabus like a lot a lot of these multiple choice questions you just can't answer unless you have an exquisite knowledge of a topic hence learning how to answer them allows you to gain that anyway guys thanks for watching this video i don't know how it turned out i know some people are going to really enjoy this video and a lot of people are not going to understand what i'm on about if you don't understand what i'm on about i apologize for that be a good video coming out tomorrow but i've been revising a lot and it was on my mind thanks for watching hope you guys have a good day and i'll be seeing you guys later bye